There used to be an ice cream shop on the corner, kids playing in the street. A sense that the violence would not strike here, at least not like this. <laughs> It's five days after multiple airstrikes hit this once quiet neighborhood in Idlib province, killing dozens of people, shattering whatever illusion of safety that may have existed. For seven years now, Syria's unraveling has been documented. What's the point in all your filming? Ibrahim Naif wants to know. For there is no humanity in this, in the world's muted response to Syria's heartless destruction. <laughs> Only one of Ibrahim's five children survived. It's just memories now. The family next door, displaced from elsewhere, were all killed, seven of them. Also killed was a media activist, Ahmed. Ahmed was just 20 years old, a nurse and first responder by training, a role he played in his native Aleppo before the family was forcibly displaced to Idlib as the regime took over. When he saw that the responders weren't there, he threw his camera aside and went to save a little girl, Ahmed's father Mahmoud tells us. But another strike came in, killing them both. His parents seemed stoic together, proud but in pain. But later, as his mother shows us Ahmed's clothes, she breaks down. In the room next door, his father shows us his photos. Tears he can't cry in front of his wife. <laughs> they did everything together. A father-son team documenting their nation's pain now directly a part of it. The sluggish summer pace of life as we drive through Idlib province seems to belie the looming violence. It's the last remaining main rebel stronghold. Turkey, Russia, and Iran have been negotiating to ostensibly come to some sort of agreement to prevent a total massacre here by the Syrian regime and its Russian backers. Turkey has military observation posts in the province and has called an assault on Idlib a red line. Its border has been closed, and instead, a senior Turkish official says, his government is pouring millions of dollars into swelling refugee camps. Abu Muhammad was just saying that he remembers when there were just a few tents here and the rest of it was just the olive groves. And now you take a look and it just has such an aura of permanence to it all. The rolling hills a stone's throw from the Turkish border have been transformed into a sea of homes of lost souls from Aleppo, Hama, Ghouta, Daraya, and elsewhere. Idlib's population has doubled in recent years as more Syrians arrived. It's also where, as other parts of the country fell back into government control, the regime relocated residents and rebel fighters. For those here, normal and home have been irreversibly redefined. We can't go back, ever, Mustafa al-Ibadi says. He doesn't trust the Assad regime. And with nowhere left to go, many feel like they're just waiting for their death sentence to be carried out. Arwa Damon Siena, Idlib province. Mm -hmm.